Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 10th of February 2020 and the time has just gone 11.55 GMT. And to be honest, it's been a fairly quiet start to the, to the trading week. Uh, European equity markets are a bit lower. Keep in mind they finished lower on Friday, but uh, last week was, was by and large a very positive week. The first few days of last week, Monday through Thursday were very positive, um, were very positive sessions for equity markets in Europe, in Asia, and the US. But they finished lower on Friday, and they finished, and they're a bit lower today. Uh, it seems to me that the kind of bullish sentiment that we had last week, uh, as strong as it was, was kind of sort of in a way artificial because it was largely driven on actions by the Chinese authorities, whereby the Chinese central bank injected liquidity into the market um, in relation to the domestic stock market. The Beijing authorities uh, put in tighter restrictions on short selling. And then on top of that, uh, the Chinese government announced plans to cut tariffs on US, cut, cut tariffs on US imports. So that was a way of kind of, you know, distracting as a way of actually, you know, keeping up, um, keeping, keeping up appearances, as it were, uh, keeping up, um, you know, um, the, the the confidence in the financial markets in China and in turn the wider world. So that lasted for the first four days of last week. We saw a down day on Friday, despite the fact we'd overall quite a positive U.S. jobs report. Lost ground in Europe, lost ground in the in the U.S. And now we're a bit lower in in, in Europe and we're pointing lower in the U.S. So it seems to me that the, the markets are a bit. Um, are, a bit of, are, are, are kind of looking for the next the next kind of big thing. Um, we've had intervention from China last last week, um, and now that we've had no more intervention, we're now seeing uh, a tapering off of um, we're now seeing a tapering off of activity. Um, it is worth remind, reminding ourselves that we had quite strong figures from the US last week in terms of the jobs report. If we look here on insights, insights can be found under market news and analysis second op- second option down. Insights. Um, the headline figure came in much better than expected. 225,000 jobs were, ex- were created. Expectations were 165,000 jobs. The previous month's number was revived higher to 147 from 145. Unemployment uh, ticked up from 3.5 to 3.6, but average earnings uh, inc- uh, came in higher than expected. It came in at 3.1% uh, when they were expecting 3%. So. Things were good on the non-farm, on the jobs market from the US, but it wasn't really enough to kind of turn sentiment around. It seemed to me like on Friday that traders were very keen to take profits and in case anything, in case the health crisis in China took a turn for the worst over the weekend. And unfortunately, the health crisis is getting worse uh, in, in China. And with that, we're seeing European stocks, uh, oil, oil, oil and gas companies, mining companies, travel stocks, you know, and also big, you know, the likes of Louis Vuitton and Burberry and any kind of Western European brands that have exposure to China, they're in the red. Um, in terms of economic indicators, it's been a fairly quiet morning. Italian industrial production was very poor, but that didn't really have a massive influence uh, on the markets. So what I'm going to do now, as always, is take a quick look at the week ahead. I'll look at the major events of the week ahead, and then I'll focus on the major charts of major charts, indices, uh, currency fares, and commodities. And the weekend article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com. Go to Insights. Under News Analysis, you'll find it. Um, So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have a preliminary GDP from the UK. Uh, Tomorrow, we have full year figures from Mercado. On Wednesday, we have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand interest rate decision. Its markets are pricing in a very high probability of no change. Dunelm, uh, the the UK-listed retailer, they have numbers out um, on um, they have half your numbers out on on Wednesday. Their share price is performing very well recently. Keep an eye out for those. Barclays will have full year figures out on on Thursday. On Friday we have an update from Centrica, the owner of British Gas. They have full year figures out uh, on across Thursday and Friday. We have U.S. CPI numbers and U.S. retail sales. And on Friday, we have full year figures from Rollback in Scotland. And we also have growth figures from not only the Eurozone, but also from, from the Eurozone's largest economy, Germany. Uh, I'll take a look now at the FTSE 100. I'll run through the, 
uh, some of the major indices, some of the major currencies, and some major commodities. So the, as we can see here, between late between mid December and into late January, with a decent move to the upside on the FTSE 100. Basically, since the um, the coronavirus concerns really kicked off, you saw a sharp move to the downside. Uh, the market bounced back, but still, we're now kind of back below the 50-day moving average at this blue line here. But we're also at the same time we're above this red line, the 200-day moving average. So if we can hold above that metric, the 200-day moving average at 7,364, we could see the kind of the kind of broader, wider trend over the last few months continue. And should that be the case, we could look at targeting. Uh, the highs of early February in around 7,538. And if we go beyond that, we're coming like heading towards 7,600. Uh, on the flip side, if we do see a decent break below the, this red line, the 30 moving average around 7,364, we could look to retest the, uh, the the lows of uh, the lows of the, the lows of late January here. And of course, if you go below that, we could head towards 7,200 or potentially down to the lows of early December. It is worth pointing out that the FTSE 100 is probably a, uh, one of the, of the big indices in, around the world, in, in say the West, as uh, probably an underperformer. It's probably because it has a disproportionately large amount of oil and gas and mining stocks in its composition, and they're heavily connected to China, therefore, they're not doing, they're not doing so well. Taking a look here at the DAX, the big picture view for the last few months, um, as, you know, from October onwards, has been very positive. We've been in a bit of a range bound between December through February, but we can see here at the market hit an all-time high in late January. Um, the highs we saw last week were not too far away from the all-time high, so sentiment is still clearly positive. We're comfortably above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average that comes into play just north of 13,300. While we hold above that metric. It's likely we could see the wider positive trend continue. So we could be looking at retail, you know, targeting 13,600 or beyond that up towards uh, the record high achieved uh, in kind of late, mid to late January. Uh, if we do see a pullback, this blue line here, 50 moving average, might like to support. And if you, even if you go below it in around this, so like it's a, a bit of consolidation in this area in around 13,200. And even if you go below that, this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, uh, just north of kind of 13,000, a big psych psychological number, that area might provide support should we see a, a fairly sizable pullback. I'll take a look at what's going on over in the US, starting off with the Dow Jones. US markets are in um, are in decent are in decent shape. It wasn't too long ago uh, we had the we had the um, both the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 at record highs uh, achieved only uh, only last Thursday, Thursday the 6th of February. The market has moved a bit lower since then. Um, we're still very much in the upward trend. You know, we're, we're comfortably above this blue line, the 50 moving average here. So the upward trend is still very much intact. We're currently expecting the uh, the, the Dow Jones to open, I and mean, when cash trading gets underway, we're expecting to open around 29,080. Yeah, 29,080 there thereabouts. Um, the wider upward trend is still very much in play. If we look to kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at testing the all-time highs. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at testing 29,600, 700, so on and so forth. Uh, any moves to the downside, if we do drift lower from here, this region here in around 28,800, uh, there's a fair bit of consolidation in that area. So that could act as support if we do see a move to the downside. And even if you go below it, this 50 day moving average here, the blue line, uh, which comes into play just south of 28,600, that area might act as support. It's only really if you take out the late January lows, could then we begin to be a bit more concerned. It's a fairly similar position on the SP 500, whereby an all time high was achieved last Thursday. This is what I'm referring to here. The market has, has, uh, has pulled back a bit of the, part of the ground. Interesting enough, though, even though in the um, in the future in the futures market on today today on Monday, the market pushed lower, but it didn't get as low as say 3,300. This area here has been a reasonably important metric recently. Didn't quite quite get as low as that, and we're now expecting the market's now in around 3,325. So we're so if we can hold above that metric. 
3,300. It's likely we could see the kind of wider upward trend continue. And then we'd be looking, potentially looking at retesting the recent all time high. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 3,060, 70, so on and so forth. But even if you do drop below uh, this, this area here, support could be found from in, in this kind of zone of say 3,250 down to this blue line here, the 50 moving average. And notice how it acted nicely as support uh, in late January, early February. So if the metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future, but although, although there are no guarantees. And the 50 day moving average comes into play at 3,228. Turning our attention to the currency markets. Uh, so, the, so the US dollar index had a very good run uh, last week. Uh, the US dollar index hit a level last seen in about kind of mid to late November, late, late November uh, last year on account of driven by, well, driven by a few factors, but the strong US jobs report really added to it. So with that, it's no surprise that we're seeing euro dollar down around these levels, down around levels last seen in October last year. So euro dollar is in a nice downward trend, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, and a lower low. But we seem to be getting it pulling back a bit of ground today. Granted, we had a few days in a row of losing, so a bit of a pullback isn't a shock. If we could hold above the lows of February, we could see a bit of a rebound, potentially up towards the 110 area. But if you do have a size of break below the Friday lows, it could take us back down towards 109 or potentially down towards the lows that we saw in early, early October in at one spot 0879, that area. Let's take a look at the British pound versus the US dollar. So we saw a bit of sideways trading between late December and uh, and January. And it didn't really kind of... It was kind of it, could, it failed to spend much time north of 132, but it didn't really spend a whole lot of time south of 130, 129 and a half. This I'm keeping an eye on this area here, one spot 29. If you can, we're, we're currently above it. We're currently in at one spot 2919. If you can hold above one spot 29, we could see the market head back towards 130. And if you go beyond that, we could head back towards this blue line, the 50 moving average in at one spot 3071. If we do have a decent break below 129, it could take us back to the lows of, uh, of early November, this area here, in around 1 spot 27.68. Taking a look at what's going on on gold, starting with the commodities. So gold is slowly but surely kind of gaining ground because it had a fairly negative and uh, a fairly sizable sell off uh, Monday, Tuesday last week, whenever we saw the Joel higher in stocks. But since then, we've seen a bit of a turnaround, and particularly seeing kind of Friday and today, we've seen stocks lower on Friday and today, and then we're seeing gold edge a bit higher. So, and also the broader trend for kind of months and months has been very much to the upside. So if we do press on higher from here in gold, we could be looking at retesting this the highs of early February in around 1593. I don't know if you go beyond that, 1600 is the next big psychological number. If we do have a size to break lower in gold. We could look ahead back down towards the lows of the mid February. This is out here in around one spot 36. And even if you go below that, gold is so strong recently. You know, we could be looking at retesting the 50 moving average in around 1526. You know, the 50 day moving average nicely acted as resistance and support in the kind of mid to late December. And as I said before, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future, but nothing is guaranteed. And I'll move on to oil. So China is the largest um, consumer importer of metals and energies, so oil and gas, in the world. So it's had a dreadful time of it recently because the fear is that the tragic health crisis in China is, could like, is likely to get an impact economic growth. That really hasn't been kind of fully kind of estimated or ascertained what the true economic cost of the health crisis is going to be. So traders have been kind of assuming the worst and you've seen a very aggressive sell-off in the oil market. We could seem to kind of have pulled back. Um, we seem, you know, we seem to have pulled back a small bit of ground today. The longish wick on this today's candle, so, you know, the, the day hasn't over yet. We're only halfway through the day. We see a bit of indecision on this candle. Uh, if we do look to kind of hold, keep off off of today's lows, we could look at rebounding, heading back towards fifty-seven dollars a barrel on Brent. But if you do have uh, a decent break below today's lows, and we, and we kind of print, you know, fresh multi-month lows. Or fresh, well, fresh year lows, uh, we could take us back towards 
uh, around kind of fifty two dollars a barrel. Keep in mind when the the recent lows, you know, today were basically that the lowest since January twenty nineteen. So there were thirteen month lows that were achieved today. And lastly, I take a look at WTI. Fairly similar position situation rather, whereby we're talking at or near uh, one year one year lows. If the lows are the the lows were kind of the one year low, the thirty month low was achieved last last week, but we're just just about clinging onto it. It had its rebound up toward this area, 52, spot 16, but it couldn't get quite above it. We appear to be going lower yet again. If we do break below the lows um, of last of last week, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here in around $48 a barrel. Uh, but on the flip side, if it you know if we could hold above last week's lows and we look to retest the recent highs here in a 52 spot 60, 16. A break beyond that could take us up toward this area here in around $54 per barrel. Now, I want to thank you for listening. Um, I covered quite a few markets, so I appreciate you bearing with me. Uh, have a good trading week and good luck.